Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Diatone Roma F1. With prop guards on, you can barely see any of the components. The VTX is a TX500, which is power switchable from 25 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts, but I forgot to unlock it, so I'm running 25 milliwatts. The flight controller is the Mamba F405 Mini Mark 3.5, and the ESC is the F25 Mark II. The ESC has been flashed, so you can run RPM filtering, which is a nice little addition. And the motors are the Mamba Toka 1103 10,000 kV motors on 40 millimeter gem fan quad bladed props and the receiver down in here is a custom mamba msr d16 which is running fr sky protocol let's not forget the camera it's the Runcam nano 2 these are all the hardware accessories it comes with the usb cable screws more screws more screws a buzzer you can't attach wiring harnesses for another receiver a key ring which i think goes to this frequency table chart see how it's got the hole up there Note, the items in red, those are locked out until you unlock the VTX. Extra battery strap. The shielding goes above the flight controller. It protects the flight controller from any sort of electrical interference from the receiver and the VTX. Here we have a USB adapter, which is still kind of hard to use because the ducts are really in the way. I'm really not sure what these parts are for. They're 3D printed, but they don't seem to have a set already on the quad, so it must be for something that you might add to the quad. Got some motor wire tape to secure it down, which I do like and is already applied to the quad. Of course, we've got a service card. Over here underneath is some QR codes that I believe might be coupons on the Diatone website and a sticker. Oh, and right up here is an extra battery mat. And it's foam, not rubber. And here is most of the documentation. You've got a little add-on if you want to add an external receiver, such as an RXSR. We've got a frame assembly guide. This is the VTX. Note how it's kind of a half board. Uh, this is our flight controller and the wiring map to all the components that go to it. We also have a sheet on the ESC over here. And the last part is again on the VTX. And if we look right here, uh, power switching or unlock, excuse me, unlocking a VTX, press and hold the button for five seconds. When it's unlocked, the 25 millivolt LED is always on. So if it's flashing, that means that you're still locked. So to get all that 500 milliwatt goodness, press that button and hold it down for five seconds. And it also comes with a nice case that it all fits inside. It weighs just about 72 grams. The recommended battery is 3S, 450 milliamp to 350 milliamp, but I'm running the 450 milliamp. That brings the weight to just over 112 and a half grams. In the HD flight samples, you are going to see these added to it. This is a mount for the Insta360 GO 2, and it came directly from Diatone. I'll have it linked down in the video description. And our all up weight with that Insta360 GO is 142 and a half grams. Looks like it does measure 85 millimeters, motor post to motor post. Unibody bottom plate looks to be two and a half millimeters thick. Can't really get my calipers in there, but I suspect that top plate is two millimeters thick. Okay, our first flight here is uh, with the prop guards or the whoops, whatever you want to call them, the prop protection. And it is after I had done some work to actually try to take care of some flight flaws. The flight flaws we were going to take a look at too, but they weren't terrible dramatic, but I thought they could use some improvement. Uh, also, I had talked to a couple of people online and, and Facebook messages that have this quad and, and were kind of just wanting some more information about some thoughts that I had on it. So I spent a little extra time, actually quite a bit of extra time flying this one and, and working on it to make it a little bit better and improve it. And uh, the benefit is for those people who might be investigating this quad, you get to see uh, how the quad handles in my space and kind of my thoughts on it. It's been out for a while. You can find it at a good many vendors. Uh, so in this particular case, I changed the PIDs somewhat, uh, but I also increased the uh, idle speed, the uh, air mode idle speed up to 6.2 or 6.3. In the moment, I'm having troubles recalling, but I do have a CLI dump, uh, actually a diff that I will link down in the video description and you can use that. Uh, of course, you know, with whoops or prop protection, we oftentimes have flight flaws. And I wanted to spend my time on that because that kind of seems to be one of the primary categories this one might serve is someone getting into the hobby or maybe it's their second quad. They're wanting to get a micro and they're wanting it to be a little bit nicer. Diatone makes a, a nice product. They always give us lots of extras. And, you know, so I just wanted to do a little bit more to try to help um, help a few people that might be early on in their FPV journey and have a little better flight experience. Of course, without the prop guards, it does fly better, uh, specifically when you add the weight of the HD camera and you try to fly it aggressively. Uh, prop guards really aren't an option, but if you're doing uh, the cruising sort of HD footage or filming, it does that just fine. 
Uh, our flight time for the most part comes in around three minutes. Of course, that varies depending upon um, what sort of camera angle and the speed that you're carrying and how heavy you uh, are on the throttle, how many punch ups you're doing. Now was. you see there, I just had that wobble in the air. That was something I was working on. And you may have noticed, and you might need to go back, that that wasn't present the first couple times I did punch outs. And here in a moment, we're gonna do another punch out over the house where it's also not present. So I think I need to do something with uh, VBAT in order to increase the uh, PIDs uh, on lower uh, voltage. Uh, so I didn't get to that and I, I kinda got at the point, actually this, this flight was yesterday evening. I did some more flying with it tonight, but I only made it worse. Uh, so I kinda had to call it quits after two weeks of really spending quite a bit of time on this. Uh, so there is a little bit of adjustment that can be made yet, I think, and to improve things a little bit more. Uh, the, the one I would do, as I mentioned, is uh, with having the yeah, uh, VBAT and kind of as it gets lower in the voltage that the PIDs will then uh, make a correction for us and, and hold the PIDs a little bit higher, uh, especially on the zero throttle. I did increase the uh, throttle idle uh, in order to help with that. Uh, but, you know, as we get lower in the battery, it tends to come back. So it's something to be aware of. But otherwise, I, I felt the tune It outside of that wobble that you get on zero throttle. It, it felt good. It didn't have huge bounce backs on uh, snap flips or rolls, anything like that. And even though it's a bit heavy, there are some benefits to that weight. And it seems to be durability because I crashed this thing a lot. You see there at the end of the flight, uh, 3 minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, so over three minutes on that battery, I went a touch low on the battery, maybe maybe five seconds. I think if we flew five seconds more, we'd be at like 3.53 volts per cell. But uh, you get a pretty good idea. I've got some more flight footage here. Let's take a look at it. So this is out of the box flying now. So this is without any of the changes that I made. And in this particular case, the battery is on the bottom and we do not have any of the prop protection on. And you'll see that I'm flying a little bit aggressively. Camera angle is limited on this. The flight stack is very close to the camera. It's a very compact quad, so it's not unexpected. Uh, but because we have those separate components of having a flight controller, an ESC, a receiver, a VTX all in there, it's very compressed. But the upside is, especially if you're relatively new to the hobby, is at some point, one or multiples, depending upon you know your crashes and what you're crashing into, is probably going to get damaged. So you have individual parts that you can replace rather than, in many cases of micros, we've just been using a ton of all-in-one boards. All-in-one board tends to run us around 50 bucks depending upon the board. In this particular case, you should be able to you know, replace one of those parts, maybe even two of those parts for the 50 bucks. So uh, I didn't have any problems with any failures of any sort. So you know, the durability, you know, again, it's we all crash different. So if you're flying in a parking lot and you weighing into a light pole or you hit the asphalt or you know something of that nature, our crashes, our damage is going to be different. Uh, but I did crash this a bunch. I actually crashed it most when I had the Insta360 go and I was trying to fly it aggressively uh, on there. I actually tore, I tore three mounts right off the quad so the camera ended up one spot in the quad somewhere else. But this also gives you a point of reference in how the bobbles, you get a lot more of the bobbles before the changes that I made. And I think the biggest improvement was increasing the idle speed on air mode, uh, which is right there. I think it's on the PID configuration page, the PID or configuration page uh, that you just pump that up. The default is 5.5. I went to 6.2 or 6.3. But again, if you like the flight that you saw initially, those are with my changes and I'll have that diff uh, down in the video description. You can download that and use it in your CLI. After you enter it, you do need to type save and then enter again, that will then reboot the flight controller and you can go back into beta flight to verify the changes are there. Uh, this particular flight runs three minutes and two seconds. Again, this is with a uh, battery on the bottom and no whoops or HD camera. This is just analog all by itself. Now, hopefully we don't need to see all of these flights because I think I went through and did uh, about 16 minutes of different flight footage. That gets to be a terrible long video. Um, if you do want to see every minute of kind of my stock testing of the footage, uh, let me know. I can upload it separately and uh, you can I can link it to you after I upload it and you can watch all of it in its glory. Uh, the sound that you hear throughout this flight footage is coming from a camera sitting on the table. It is not from uh, the Insta360 Go. I don't use that audio. It doesn't sound very good, although it's better than it was. It's still not very good. Uh, but I mix that audio from the camera on the table into our flight footage. 
uh, so that you get a sample of what it sounds like as the pilot. So th this flight was only 302 and just a touch under 3.5 volts per cell. So real close to where I would want to land. I'm comfortable with that. Also in the top right hand corner, you can see I'm running race band 6 and 25 milliwatts, which uh, if you're looking at the reception thinking, well, that's not very good reception. Eh, I should have unlocked the VTX. One of the shortcomings I was focused on flight and uh, improving the performance. Next flight is with the battery on top. Still no whoop. Uh, I wanted to test them both out. This flight's gonna run three minutes and 14 seconds. Again, 3S, 450 milliamp battery. Uh, I did a bunch of different flights in a bunch of different ways just to see the difference and kind of get a gauge on where I wanted to start as far as the tuning goes. And I, after doing it and seeing that it had these whoops and seeing that it had lived through the crashes, I thought, this, this quad is, is certainly probably primarily targeted at those that are fairly on in their uh, FPV journey. You're not going to be you know going really, really fast. You're, you're getting comfortable on the sticks. You're maybe learning some basic tricks. Maybe you're participating in iGal and doing some of the tricks with a whoop separately. And you might want to incorporate some of those tricks uh, into outside flight with something like this. I think, no, I don't think you can do iGal with this. That's one sticking point, I don't think. I think iGal, if you do 3S, you have to be running HD, which I guess technically if you put uh, Insta360 Go on there, that is HD. But you see again, I'm doing a lot of those zero throttle punches and you can see those bobbles. They're not terrible, you're not losing control. It's just not what we're looking for uh, in our quads. For the most part, we want our quads to hold position. And in the first like minute and a half to two minutes of my initial flight, I think it did a much better job um, of holding its position when zero throttle. Let's go ahead and move on up to the next flight, which uh, is with the Insta360 GO 2, and it is a cinematic sort of slow cruisy flight, and that will give you an idea if you want to do some filming. Uh, I did also fly this in the house, and I'll show that flight sample in a picture-in-picture -in, -picture in the house, because boy, there's a lot of flight footage. I don't know whether to include all this, but I got it written down in my notes, so we're going to roll through it. Hopefully you got a, a drink or something with you that you can... <laughs> uh, refresh your palate as we go through all this different flight footage. And this, as I said, is our slow cinematic flight. This is with the uh, prop protection or the whoops or the ducks on, and this is going to be much slower. This is more cinematic filming sort of uh, flight. The Insta360 Go does a pretty decent job, now that I've got it all buttoned up and corrected, of smoothing the flight out. Of course, the Insta360 GO is not a light camera like it used to be. The initial uh, 360 GO used to be, uh, I think it was 10 or 12 grams less than this one. So it's gotten uh, near the 30 gram limit. So it weighs just about as much as a naked GoPro. Uh, so this should give you some point of reference for uh, your flight time and how it flies if you were to choose to go the naked GoPro route. But Dytone, I'm not certain Dytone has a mount for a naked GoPro. They sent me a link to this mount, and I'll link that mount down in the video description. Uh, as I said, I did tear a couple of them off, but my prints aren't necessarily top quality. I don't spend a lot of time uh, learning my printing. Uh, oftentimes when I need a really good print, I just buy it from somebody who really knows what they're doing. My prints, uh, at best, are hacks. You know, they, they get the job done, but may not get it done for very long. This flight is going to run 3 minutes and 41 seconds, of course, so we're slowing down. Uh, we still have the whoops on there, but we don't have much wind. There is some resistance in the air naturally to whoops. Uh, with wind, uh, you're going to have to fight that a little bit more, and so your flight time may come down if you're doing the same sort of flight with the same sort of uh, HD camera uh, with the whoops with the ducks on as well. You can see there as we pass by the patio area, I am in my work clothes. Yeah, back to the office, and it's been a little bit strange. Uh, during the pandemic, or I guess actually before the pandemic started, um, the organization I work for had uh, started the process of getting a new building built, but of course getting city permits as the pandemic kicked off became problematic, so the building was delayed. And in the time frame that I was working from home during the pandemic, they hired so many people, they decided they would give my office to somebody else, which I didn't have a problem with. But it meant that once they kind of thought everybody should be coming back to work, not that there were too many of us working from home. I think the organization only had like eight people working from home. I didn't have anywhere to go. <laughs> so uh, there was nowhere for me to even sit. Uh, so they had to wait for the building to get built. It's actually, I've been back, it's uh, two and a half weeks now. It's kind of strange because I'm in the basement of the new building and I'm the only one down there. 
everybody else that's moved into the new building is upstairs and it's a, a cell phone black hole uh, i haven't been able to jump on discord like i had been uh, because i've got no wi-fi on my phone or anything the wi-fi actually stops just outside my office door so in order to be able to get wi-fi stand outside my office and then wait for the wi-fi to reconnect and uh, then i can go about doing some other things in those uh, little free moments that i might have during work but yeah it's been a bit strange you know i don't uh hear from too many people and because so many people are used to me working from home they're not calling all that much i've called a few people and i've kind of walked around to uh show my face make sure everybody uh, remembers who i am it's been about 15 months and uh, say hello to people that um, i worked with before the pandemic and everything so uh, i i'm certain i'm not alone in that i suspect there's many people that have gone through it or are going through it now or will go through it uh, a lot of people are still working from home or they're uh, switching out organizations for places that uh, still work from home i've landed it flat on its face again that flight was three minutes and 41 seconds of slow cruisy flight the next one is whoops in HD. This is going to end in a crash and I'm going to tear the mount uh, plumb off the top of the quad. But this again, I was doing more testing, trying to figure out, you can see as I come down to the bottom of that punch out, I really had to jam the throttle, that extra weight, you can really feel it. And then I had that little hump in my recovery. You Typically you don't want that, you want it to be smooth when you come down, you want to kind of just hit, um, a level field as you come down to the altitude that you want you know five six feet off the ground uh, it's a lot tougher when you've added this much weight to a quad that is already fairly heavy and it only has 40 millimeter props on it there's only so much thrust we can get and you know eventually uh, I think I punch out from the chimney side to the garage side and it was actually a really nice angle you kind of come down through the gaps in the trees but I didn't recover in time and I splat right into the ground and the camera tears off and it ended up about 10, 15 feet away from where the quad was. Um, and the mount was still on it. The, the camera stuck in the mount, but it tore the screws right off. It's only got two screws that attach to the front two screws of the uh, top plate. And then it's got kind of a hook or a latch in the print that goes kind of underneath the top plate uh, in the rear section. But this is without any sort of prop protection. This is uh, no whoops, uh, because when we get to the whoop part, you'll see why you do not want to fly. Well, here's the crash. There it is. Yeah, camera 10, 15 feet away from the quad. This flight actually came before. This is with the whoops of the ducks on. Again, we're looking at Insta360 Go footage. Audio is coming from the camera that's sitting on the table in front of me, and it freaks out. So if you're wanting to fly aggressively with the extra weight of an HD camera, I think we have a lot of work to do. And from what I see and how it responded to that, I don't know how viable it's going to be. Even if somebody like UAV Tech, Mark Spatz does you know, a Primo PID tune on, I just don't know that we have the authority of the motor prop combination in order to be able to effectively stabilize the quad with this much weight on it and, and still be able to fly it aggressively. You can see here, that you know you can flat fly it aggressively fairly well but if you do any uh, you know traditional freestyle sort of maneuvers it gets a little wonky look at even those turns it's kind of freaking out the voltage is getting low the motors can't compensate for what it needs to do so you can fly kind of flat fast or at least as fast as the camera angle will allow but it's it's problematic at the very least but I don't think that's a primary feature of something with ducks or prop guards on them and has a mount that's made for you know a 29 gram camera. I think the primary focus is going to be training, getting comfortable with the sticks, and if you're someone who wants HD footage, you have the capability of doing some smooth, cruisy, flat flying uh, with prop protection. You could even do that inside or inside a larger space. But that is the end of my pre-roll or pre-defined, pre-packaged flight footage as we land there at the end. I did fly it inside, and as I said, I do a picture in picture. Uh, that inside flight will start rolling if it's not already. I wanted to take a look at this mount. Again, this is my print. My printing is not very good. I have an old printer. I've never spent much time tuning it. Uh, so you can judge the print as garbage. It doesn't hurt my feelings, but I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, so you've got these two areas here where the screws on the front go. And then this little hook goes right in behind 
you kind of latch it up underneath there and then it sits uh, nice and proud on top. You probably saw that in the thumbnail. I think I took thumbnails in a couple of different ways. I will try to, hopefully I included a thumbnail that has the, the prop guards and the mount and the camera, everything on it. Uh, it is fairly universal as far as what it could do. Of course, it doesn't do all the things well. You can take the prop guards off. You're going to get more flight time. It decreases weight, decreases wind resistance. But you, then you have the props exposed, so that may mean that you end up going through props. They are push-on props. They are not uh, props that are mounted with screws. Uh, generally, with the gem fan props, I don't have the, a problem with them coming off. Uh, we don't get any extra props, or at least my package didn't have any extra props. Uh, check the packing details from wherever you find this quad to make sure uh, that either is the same, or if it's you know says an extra set of props, then bonus. Mine just didn't come with that. Uh, the, it's got, oh, I can show this very effective. Hopefully you can see right down in there. It's got a TPU print that holds your antenna as well as the battery lead. And then when you fly it with a bottom mounted battery, you just kind of pull that out. See how it's got that gap right down in there. You just kind of pull that out after you've taken the prop guards off and then you can fly it. Or you don't technically have to take the prop guards off. You can see it'll bend enough to where you can get it out of there and you could bottom mount the battery. The antenna positioning isn't great. It's not going to have the most possible range, but it's a D16 FR Sky protocol. It should get you at least 100 meters, um, even with you know some objects between you and the quad, but that's going to depend upon what those objects are, of course, as well. You can get the battery strap both on top and bottom without using any tools, which is a nice thing. It does take a little finessing to get through both ways. Uh, I found that if you just pushed a side down and you th got it threaded through there a little bit and then you push the other side down because it is rubber mounted in there then you push the other side down and you just kind of force feed it through. It does work. When I flew the quad with the battery on the bottom, I did not use the extra battery mat. I don't think it's actually made to go on the bottom. I think it's just made as a replacement for the top. But of course, if you were interested because it does come with the battery mat on top, you could use that extra one to... To do something on the bottom. I would prefer that all battery mats be rubber uh, It's because that's going to grip our battery better. I do appreciate the fact that they used a, a nice small battery strap. You don't have a bunch of extra and it does have a metal buckle. So the, the battery strap is good. I'm just not a huge fan of foam battery mats. It does a little bit to help protect your battery from taking screw damage when you do crash, but it doesn't do a whole lot to keep the quad or keep the battery with the quad on crashes. Although I it's somewhat unfounded in this case because in all my crashes, I didn't have the battery come out. I had it kind of move around a little bit, but it never came all the way out. Uh, you can see there it's got a USB-C port, and we had that adapter that I showed in the quick roll. Even to get the adapter in there, I found I had to like stick my finger in here to get things moved around, and then I had to use uh, what I could get in here to get that adapter mounted. It's definitely not something I would leave in the quad. Matter of fact, I left my finger in there because I felt like the ducts were gonna press on the adapter and therefore apply pressure to the USB port. So that's definitely a temporary connection. It's not a permanent connection. Um, we see a little bit of the motor wire tape here. They primarily used it to secure the antenna. And I, I like this tape. I've talked about it many, many times. I oftentimes refer to it as Emacs tape, but we're seeing more and more companies using it and uh, many people have asked me about it as well. Of course, we have uh, hex screws primarily. We've got four in each motor, but we do have Phillips screws through the stack. Not a huge deal because you're generally not adjusting those unless you're into a major repair. Uh, these two boards on the top, they are secured, the VTX and the receiver boards. They're half boards, and maybe you can see down in there how they're kind of separated. See that kind of yellowish tinted glue stuff that they use a lot on uh, UFL antenna connectors. That's kind of the separation of the two boards. So you could use, if one of those were to get damaged, you could use pretty much anything off the shelf, but if you want it to be neatly secured in there like it comes, then you pretty much have to buy the replacement parts from Diatome. I'm unaware of anyone else who's doing those half boards, so those are custom. Um, this is our button, isn't it? You know, this is our button to the VTX, so that is the button. You, you put it, plug in the battery, you press and hold this for five seconds, and then you recycle the battery, and when the LED light comes back on, it should be solid. That means it's unlocked, and uh, 500 milliwatts is unlocked. It also runs 250 milliwatts. The VTX tables is not fully set up for that, uh, but in the manual off the diatone.us website, uh, you will find all the entries that you can manually type in. 
Um, they also reference in the manual a JSON file that you can uh, click the load from file to get the VTX, excuse me, to get the VTX table updated like it needs to be so that um, all the power cycles can be used. Uh, I mentioned in the quick roll that there is that extra shielding that goes between the flight controller and the top two boards, but there's also some shielding uh, between the just above the ESC. And that's fairly interesting. We haven't seen any other manufacturers, at least to my knowledge, do that, especially in micros. The, the, the premise is any sort of electrical interference, radiation, whatever the term is, that it wouldn't be going from board to board. Therefore, you shouldn't have any outside interference in your electronics giving you fits. Now, of course, we have an FR Sky uh, base radio uh, receiver and a VTX that are side by side. So there's potential that they could bother either one of them. Uh, I know that FR Sky telemetry sometimes can cause video interference fits. Uh, I didn't notice it, but I'll let you diagnose that for yourself in all the footage that we've seen. Uh, getting to your camera angle, especially with the prop guards on, well, you got to loosen the prop guards at the very least in order to be able to get a screw in there. Hopefully you can see it's kind of buried behind this arm. So you, I tried to get a driver in that gap and still to the screw. Didn't work. I had to loosen the prop guard of the duct off and up and then kind of bend things around so that I could get to that screw. Uh, it's really hard to see, but the camera is basically against that connector. Hopefully you can see that just above my fingernail, there's that connector. The camera is pretty much leaning against that. And it is all the way forward as far as the slider in here. So the slider allows the camera to move forward and back. In this particular case, it's all the way forward. And you can get a touch more camera angle because I fussed with this and I did get some more camera angle. There's an antenna wire in there. If you move that out of the way, you can get, you know, an extra two millimeters of up tilt. Um, but it's, it's a little bit fussy to deal with. So if you want to change your camera angle, it's not something you can do very quickly. Uh, it's something that you are going to need a driver for. I mentioned in the flight how I thought the next step of improving the flight performance was to uh, turn on VBAT PID compensation. Uh, that's here on screen. It's a pretty easy thing to do. You just uh, click that little slider to where it turns that yellowish orange color. Uh, you can see there as well that the PIDs that I was working with that I changed slightly from the defaults. I don't have a screenshot of the idle, but that's pretty basic on the configuration page on the right hand side where you see it says 5.5. Uh, pump that up to 6.3. You may even want to go to 6.5 and see how that works for you as well. You basically, when you're changing that idle speed, you just don't want the quad wanting to take off once you are sitting, but you're armed. So the props are spinning. You don't want it to start skittering around. You want it to still sit in place, but you don't necessarily want it so high that it wants to take off. It gets too light. Um, and, and turning up that idle can cause issues. Well, it doesn't cause issues. It changes how things fly a little bit. That's just unavoidable when you make that change, especially if you were to get to the point in your FPV journey where you're doing inverted moves. Like sometimes those dives where I'd come in, I'm actually somewhat inverted because of the camera angle when you get the camera straight down. So you're slightly inverted as you come down and then you come out of it. And then as you're flying forward, you're slightly tilted forward. So it can, when you have that idle higher, it's actually driving you down rather than floating naturally down. A uh, little bit unavoidable because even if you have it at the defaults, uh, air mode does that. It's one of the things that makes zero throttle uh, maneuvers possible. So it's something that you need to have on, uh, especially in outside quads. You can fly inside quads when you're not planning to do flips, rolls, and other tricks. And it'll work out fine. It actually works out better. So if you bump into stuff, it doesn't uh, freak out. You know, air mode can, you know, suck itself to the wall if you're running a hoop inside. But, you know, overall for the quad, it's uh, not the greatest performer, but I think if you're looking at this, you're not looking at the ultimate performance in this size of package. What you're doing is you're looking at this uh, for a training purposes, getting more comfortable in FPV. And, you know, you have the prop protection. It has the ability to carry an Insta360 Go or a Naked GoPro. Uh, you do have some wiring that you might have to do for a Naked GoPro, but the Insta360 Go has its own battery. So you could do some cinema cinematic flying and, and capture some footage if you wanted to. You can also fly it faster. You can learn some tricks on it. So it has some capabilities. It's not, I guess I'm going on and on because I feel like the people that I talked to were really concerned about maybe they had bought a bad quad. I don't think this is a bad quad by any stretch. It has some flight improvements that uh, could be made, but 
I, I don't find in prop protected quads that it does everything well. It's really, really rare that you find anything with prop protection that does anything remotely as versatile as we oftentimes want. One of the best that I have flown, and I don't have a camera on it right now, is the Synlog 25. But this is a much bigger quad, a completely different category, in my opinion. It's a DJI. This one has more acrobatic abilities than this one, but this one is smaller and it's less expensive because, you know, that's got DJI in it. And this one also doesn't have any camera protection. This has camera protection. So this is, um, this is much more viable as far as someone who's learning to fly and they're getting more comfortable. And even if you're somewhat comfortable, maybe you want to venture in a little bit more hardcore into doing uh, more tricks, like I said, with iGAO. Okay, I've gone on far too long. I Hopefully I've answered all the questions for the people that do have this quad, for the people who might be looking at this quad. If you do have any other questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. Yeah, down in that comment section, that's where that goes. I appreciate your time. And thank you. Thank you so much if you've watched all the way to the end.